Hello, kittens, and welcome to Maker's Mischief. On this show, we'll talk about all kinds of things related to costume, clothing, and a mischievous take on crafts and making. Because it can't be serious all the time. Every stitch we take, we have to be perfect. And this is where we cut loose and have fun. Get <laughs> <Okay>, stop it. <laughs> This segment is called, wait, what? Let's talk about ladies' dress for just a minute. Um, and, and we'll discuss the subject of hip rolls because this has been an ongoing bugaboo of mine for decades in looking at historical everything. You look at paintings, you look at sculptures, you get this round, I mean like round, beautiful curve coming off of the waist that gives the skirts this beautiful drape and everything just looks gorgeous and perfect and fabulous. And then you come to these modern historical events and you see this shelf. And your first reaction is like, are you gonna just like set your mug on top of that? You're gonna serve tea there? Like what's going on? I make these rolls really nice and soft so that we have this beautiful line. But every time I see one that looks like a shell, I just pull up short it completely wrecks my like little historical moment and I'm just like, it's gotta be really hard. Isn't that like uncomfortable? And another thing, let's just talk for a second about the shape, okay? Every small image that we have, the three images that we have of these things from the time period show a full sausage shape that goes all the way around the body. Not like this weird little crescent pancake stuffed pillow thing that people wear, like, Come on, that's like, that's a neck pillow for being on an airplane that is not a dressing roll for your hips. So... This is one of the more delicate parts of this web series, is the critique. Now, I understand that in Wait What, like, we're getting a little bit sassy about things that sort of harsh our jive when it comes to being a historical environment, but there's few things that are worse than a person that has some knowledge about a historical time period sitting down to watch an historical TV show or film and then being, like, completely flabbergasted by the not-so-historically-correct costumes. Like, I know for me it's taken years of actually working in the industry and understanding what's going on in order to be able to let go of my anger almost at the fact that the clothes are like so not good. Let's talk about Jamestown, the TV series, because I mean, I actually had people email me when it came out a couple years ago to be like, oh my God, what do you think of these clothes? And I could not respond. I'm like, I'm a professional in the industry and I don't need to have an opinion on this right now. And that time has passed. So, <clears throat> opening scene, people on a boat. First thing that I see, first thing that I notice is this sort of reddish pink bodice with the tied on sleeves that are like 150 years, way too early for the time period they're trying to show. So I'm already confused and literally like, I'm trying really hard to like get into like, I need to read the, see the story and understand what's happening. And this woman's outfit, the first thing I do is just laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. Not even kidding. I just thought I went, ha! <laughs> it, it was ridiculous to me. Like the, the whole tie on sleeve thing, a la 15th century Italian, but they're using it in 17th century New World. It, it just, it didn't really work for me. Now, I understand that um, they need to have some versatility in their costumes because these characters have to do a lot of physical work and you can't have a sleeve like that sewn in all the way and have an actor feel comfortable to do a bunch of physical work while they're on a boat, right? So there have to be some allowances there, but at, at the same time, it like, it just like hit me in the face when I saw it. After I laughed, I paused for a minute because she was in this costume for quite a while. And then I kind of paused and I pulled myself back because I really, I'm, I'm not an asshole. I try not to be an asshole anyway. But then I was like, okay, all right, what is this costume designer trying to say 
by putting her in these clothes in this scene? What is the visual language they're trying to speak to us with by putting this costume on? Aside from, psst, I didn't have a big budget and I really just, I really needed this dress, okay? It was the right color. Like, more than that, designers don't make that kind of arbitrary decision as often as we might think. There's probably something going on that's giving her that look at that time. I mean, there has to be, right? Like, really not that bad in terms of a costume for screen, but in terms of historical accuracy, it just is out of left field as far as I'm concerned. So, we have to ask ourselves, what are they trying to say? Well, this woman is starting a new life, right? That means she's transitioning from one place to another. She's been on this boat for a while, so her clothes are a little beaten up. She's not got them tied up really tightly because she's probably uncomfortable having been on the boat. Many people in this scene are like puking and seasick anyway. So it's in the middle of a big storm. What's she trying to say with this? Other than I'm the lead. <laughs> That's really not quite what we're gonna get out of this costume at this point. But in like two minutes into the scene, she ends up talking to this like fiercely fabulous blonde who's got like all kinds of stuff on, a totally proper cloak for the 18th century, not 17th century, but who's splitting hairs. She's wearing it, she looks great, she's kind of terrified, there's a storm and everything, and cute little gal in the reddish pink dress with the really bad sleeves goes and helps her out, makes her feel a lot better. And so then you get this idea of, oh, her clothes are a little bit weak so that they can be in contrast to this woman who is clearly much wealthier than her and has much more power than her. And that, once we get to that point in the scene, then you realize, oh, that's why she has this outfit on. Because it was never about the grommets, even though my eyes, the first thing they saw was grommets in the back of her dress. Not cute. So it's really about expressing this language of vulnerability against this woman who is dressed much more powerfully and much more wealthily than her. So a designer really has to go for those kinds of things. I mean, it's really sad because I'd love to just be like, honey, it's not that hard to get something that's correct for this time period. It's not that hard to set a sleeve into an armhole without having to tie it in like some kind of Renaissance fair. It's not that hard, but there's a reason they chose not to do it. And that's something that we always have to remember when doing these things, <laughs> especially when I get to the next bit. Halfway through the show, we see one of our main bad guys. Oh my God. His clothes, however, okay, I, it was the third time, second time, I think, in the show where I actually laughed out loud. The second he came on screen, his ruff is one of those beautiful, very carefully, painstakingly made ruffs that looks like a 1980s car air filter. Not cute. Second, his doublet, oh my god, his doublet. All right, how do I say this without being a complete prick? Because it's hard. It's brown, it's like poop brown. It's not even a cute kind of brown. It is embroidered in, how do I describe this? It's embroidered in this cheap ass vermicelli pattern that kind of, when I say vermicelli, it's just like the squiggly random one, right? Like I've seen its existence on literally one 17th century piece. And on that 17th century piece, it's done beautifully and it's done in a chain stitch and it's done in silk on linen and it's really, really cute, but not on him in this particular moment. It was black thread on poop brown and you could tell, you could tell all the way from where the camera was, it had to be polyester and it was had to be polyfill quilting in it. Like, <sighs> but wait, there's more. So then you sort of move your eye out from the horrifying pattern and you get to the center front binding, which is done in what appears to be like a faux leather. And then it's done with hooks and eyes. It's closed with hooks and eyes that are spaced way too far apart. Um, I'm not entirely sure if they were even set properly because there's some times where they're just like kind of peeking open and very, very strange. Like the overall effect when he's like in the background, kind of far away is not bad. But the closer he gets, the more it kind of looks like the doublet that I made for that Shakespeare performance I did in 10th grade. Like, it's really not what you should be seeing on any kind of show that's this caliber. Anyway, it was a little bit of an eyesore. It really brought me up short. Um, and there are plenty of other lovely things. I mean, can we talk about the cute men that are in this TV show? Because, well, it's very entertaining that way. I might overlook the costumes just to watch that. But, you know, Again, 
the language of his costume is not pleasing to the eye, and I think that really jives well with his kind of asshole character that he's playing, you know? I mean, again, like, my first reaction is to the clothes, because that's what I do, and I want them to be great. I want everybody to look so fierce. But then, like, he comes in, and then you realize, oh my god, he's like, he's one of the baddies. So then it makes you, as a person looking at clothes, kind of makes you hate him even more because the clothes aren't really that good. The rough, like, the rough kind of reminds me more of a priest than it does of, like, an arist aristocratic guy from the 17th century. And, you know, I don't like you, and I'm not gonna like you. And you and your weirdo doublet can just keep going. Thank you. There's, there was something that I really, really enjoyed, and I wanna make sure that I say this particularly last, because I wanna leave you with sort of a rosy, sunny feeling about at least one costume thing that's done really well. And that is about halfway through the episode, right around the time when we meet this baddie that has this doublet that sets my teeth on edge, we also get our, our, wealthy, uh, our wealthy supporting leading lady, maybe she's leading, I still don't know yet, it's only one episode in, but we get her in one of those beautiful embroidered waistcoats. I don't know, if this was custom made, it's probably machine made. I can't imagine their budget could even support a sleeve that's done properly. But she looked so cute in this little jacket. It just fit her so well. And it. And when I say fit well, I don't mean it fit her like a glove. I don't believe that real clothes in this time period fit like a glove. And that's something that I think this show does really well, is that the clothes don't fit like we expect them to fit when they're on stage or on screen in like a typical period Hollywood drama, right? Like we see these beautiful, perfectly fit everythings without a single wrinkle, without a single bit of actual life in them. These are just lovely, beautiful actors walking around like hangers doing their performances through costumes that look way too fresh and way too perfect. In contrast, these costumes look very used, very dirty. Some of them look like they're hand-me-downs. I mean, there's this one the, this, this pious little maidservant lady, and she's got like these little tucks in the shoulders of her doublet that just say to me like, A, they either had to do an alteration in like five minutes before it went on camera, or that they're trying to really express the reuse of this garment that it was sized down from something else. So I really think that they've got some fabulous elements that they do really, really well to tell the story. Now, if the writing could just pick up pace ever so slightly, it's trying to be a very serious drama when it really is kind of like a Jamestown 90210 sort of situation. And I think that hopefully in the future episode, it's actually going to loosen up just a little bit. But this first episode felt very plodding to me, like just heavy. And the, the weird inaccuracies in the costume did nothing to like help me get there with the show. Do you know what I mean? So. I think in all, I'm definitely encouraged to watch more episodes of it, and I can start to overlook a lot of the costume things because I, I have an idea of what they're going for, thankfully. By the end of the first episode, I have this idea of visually what their language is trying to be. But I still am not entirely sure what the show is trying to be. And that's a whole different kind of talk, something that I'm not fully qualified to really explain, but um, I, I look at it and I feel it, and all of those things have to come together in order for me to really enjoy a show. So I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this one yet, but I'm certainly along for the ride. This is the last segment of every show, and it's basically where somebody asks me a question and I give the answer. Uh, and they could be questions about my personal life as a creative person, it can be uh, questions about making clothes, it can be questions about, you know, pretty much anything related to what I do. I mean, it could even be a baking question for all of that. I don't care. I'm going to do it. I'll take appropriate ones that I put on camera, but um, I just feel like this is a great place for people to ask questions they may have and see if I can give them an answer that they like. Um, so one of the questions that was sent to me is by Megan, and she's from, from New York. And she asks, what is the kind of wearability difference between a seam that's sewn by hand and a seam that's sewn by machine? And I wish the answer was a little more black and white. It's not. Nothing really in this trade is black and white. But here is sort of the quick answer. 
When a seam is sewn by hand, most of the seams that are sewn by hand, um, which are typically sewn by machine, can usually be replicated with what we call a back stitch. And this stitch is a sort of loopy, um, moving stitch and so the needle goes in and then the thread loops around and the needle comes out so this is sort of the path of it and so you can see that it has all this slack which makes it pretty elastic as well as being really strong so that elasticity is one of the main things that people talk about in hand sewn garments versus machine sewn garments you get this kind of flex that happens and hand sewn seams are much more likely to have sort of a give and a shrink and a move so that the garment will conform to your shape, kind of like breaking in a pair of shoes. Um, so that's reason number one that a hand sewn seam kind of works better on the body, I think. Um, reason number two that I really like with hand sewn seams is you can change, intentionally you can change the structure and tension of a seam as you're sewing it. Whereas when a machine is sewn, you usually have to do something to some part of that seam to sort of preset it in whatever new tension or shape that you want. But with hand sewing, as you're working, since you're making every single stitch, you could decide, I need this section to be tighter and more puckered. And you can suddenly pull your stitches a lot tighter as you're doing it. So you have this freedom and flexibility in stitching a seam by hand that might help it contour better to the body. I think in general, hand sewn seams conform better to the human physique. They, they sit m more nicely over curves and bumps and hollows and things than machine sewn seams do. Eventually machine sewn seams really will uh, let go and eventually they'll conform or you can just kind of beat them into submission with iron. Whatever makes you happy. But I think with a hand sewn seam you kind of naturally get that happening as it goes. So that's the answer to that question. It's not a super fancy answer, but um, it's definitely one that I like. It's one that I've given before, and it's one that I know to be true. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of whatever this show is. And I hope to see you next time. Happy stitching.